I mean, I think part of what the strength of science is, is that even the consensus, you're really welcome to question. I don't think that science is meant to be um, like this dictatorial thing, but you have to do it with precise rules, with high logic, high integrity, and willingness to actually let go of false claims that you make or being wrong about hypotheses. So that actually adds an immense amount of trust to it. I think that mm. science is immensely trustworthy and it's legitimate. I think that's how I would frame it. Um, and, and Nathan, just as we start to close out the program, I mean, something that, uh, that that Joshua brought up there, you know, a key factor of his why he does believe in God and Jesus is he believes in the resurrection of Jesus. And he might be using a different set of evidences and different set of experience and whatever to judge that, not the scientific sort necessarily. Um I mean, I can imagine again, you know, I've got Jerry Coyne in my ear here <laughs> saying something along the lines of, well, at that point, you're no longer a, a credible scientist. Uh, and, and I'll obviously let Joshua respond to that as well. But what, what's your view on that? When when you hear um, people of faith um, saying, I believe in, you know, the authority of this book, uh, the Bible, um, I believe in the miracles in it, I believe in uh, the resurrection of Jesus. How do you, what do you think that says of, of someone who is a scientist like, like Joshua? Joshua, Nathan. Well, I don't think it says anything about um, him as a scientist. It's I see it's totally separate as his, from his work and his identity as a scientist. And I do think that scientist is an identity. We don't talk about that enough, but it's more than just a job. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a it's a way of looking at the world. You really you're ruined for life when you get <laughs> a strong science education. Um, but one thing I would say is that. I don't tend to to critique people's beliefs about. I mean, I would only have a conversation about the resurrection if it was forced upon me, <laughs> um, and, and and about ancient books and, and which ones right. All I say is that I'm very well versed uh, about Christianity, Christian doctrine, and the Bible. I went to uh, Catholic education all the way through university. I'm Jesuit educated. I know I know a lot about it, um, and I just don't see anything in it that that. Um, that, that didn't apply to any other religious belief. I didn't see any preference for, for one religion over another uh, in terms of the evidence uh, to turn the tide. Um, but that doesn't mean that I don't understand why others do. And, um, you know, I don't like sports and I, <laughs> I do like opera and I understand why people don't. I, I think people can think and experience the world differently. Um, and I know that people see religion as having these ultimate, very, very serious consequences, um, whether you believe or not. Uh, and that's the thing that I just don't see any evidence for. But that doesn't, you know, it, it, it as long as any, it, no one's impinging on my uh, rights to believe or not, I, I don't have any wish it, to it, on sound, It sounds a bit like you're saying then in a way, kind of like the way we can choose to like opera or not, that people can agree to differ when it comes to religion. But what they can't agree to differ on is is the hard scientific facts. That's where you say there's a kind of an objective. Exactly. Well, we disagree about that all the time, too. There's okay. some objectivity there that that I do think that that has some preference, like some privilege of objectivity. But one thing I'll say is even though I, I look out at the world and I don't see a, a lot of evidence for supernatural intervention, I also don't see any reason or any anything we should be other than kind to each other, right? I see so much scientific reasons of why we should want to work together and, and get along and accept each other's differences and even celebrate each other's differences. I see a lot of scientific reasons to do that. I don't see a lot of scientific reasons to attack one another over things that that don't really direct your, your, your life in particular. I, and I don't see um, any scientific reasons that we should want to exacerbate our differences instead of um, instead of trying to celebrate our mm-hmm. common ground. I think there's a lot of reasons um, why we can um, be tolerant of one another's yeah. beliefs and not insulting towards those beliefs sure, sure. and instead come together on our common problems. And I think we all win um, in, well, in, that, we in that. I mean, Joshua, did, did you want to say anything to, to that point that, that Nathan said about, you know, he does see there's a kind of objectivity to science that whereas he's, he sees that religious beliefs are kind of in the eye of the beholder more um, in, in that way? Well, I mean, I think that uh, I do. Well, I mean, we get this whole, this whole debate about what objective and subjective is. I mean, I think part of what the strength of science is, is that even the consensus, you're really welcome to question. I don't think that science is meant to be um, like this dictatorial thing, but you have to do it with precise rules, with high logic, high integrity, and willingness to actually let go of false claims that you make or being wrong about hypotheses so that actually adds an immense amount of trust to it i think that mm. science is immensely trustworthy and it's legitimate i think that's how i would frame it um 
And, and that's why it's not that we're demanding that it be trusted. It's just that because of that, it is trusted broadly. That's why how even there's atheists that disagree with the entire effort in my book, but because I followed the rules of mainstream science and I made scientific arguments, they'll concede upfront that the science I put forward is correct and consign their disagreement to really, uh, you know, philosophical objections or just values objections. And, and, and that's because science really gives us a common way of convincing one another about evidence. Mm. And so if you depart from that, you really lose your ability to really convince people to think differently about evidence. I think that's a, a key point. But, um, you know, is there truth beyond science? I think unequivocally, yes. I mean, I think we, we, we just know that. And, uh, you know, I am also in agreement with, with uh, you know, Nathan, that even when it comes to my beliefs about God and the resurrection, I think there's evidence for it, but I don't want to press that on anyone. I'm truthful about it. I confess it. And anyone who's really curious to know, they can come find out and they'll see that there's just an amount, month's amount of public evidence that Jesus really did rise from the dead. I mean, that's how I know that God exists. He's good and wants to be known. Now, if someone knows, hears that for me and doesn't want to look, you know, that, that's, that's really their choice. And I'm okay with that. We're still in the, set, the same city together and we can still seek the mm. common good of the city together. And I think that's really what's going on here. And part of that common good, I would just say, is not merely can we just get along. I think there's some really beautiful things here. And, you know, if we accept closed-ended answers, we're missing out. I think when you look at science, I think you see four grand mysteries that no one really knows why it is this way. I mean, we have scientific accounts, but even if we had a full, complete, proved in account, which we don't for these things, it would still raise questions about why it happened this way. Why mm. is there something rather than nothing? It mm. could have been a world without, without anything, no matter. Mm. Why is there... Um, you know, life in, in a world instead of just being in, you know, a world full of non-life. Mm. Uh, why is there, uh, you know, not just life, but also animals with, you know, consciousness, like in, in that sense, like, yeah. you know, animal minds. Why is there a world of that versus just having plant life, for example? And then also finally, how is it and why do we, is there a human mind? Those are four grand questions. Why is there something rather than nothing? Why is there life? Mm. Why is there animal minds and why is there a human mind i don't think there's really a good account of this there's certainly not a total account and these are really grand questions they're yeah. really going to unsettle simple answers and we really benefit as we engage with science and what we're finding out in nature through that but also as we engage with theology in the long conversation of the last several thousand years as people through history have really come to those same questions and wondered about them